Welcome to worship tonight on this Good Friday evening, this holy night of the year when we, real, when we recognize, when we give thanks to God for Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for all of us. A few notes on the service. Uh, we will have the traditional time of lament, confession, and bidding prayers in the beginning of tonight's service. And then our choir will lead us in sharing God's word tonight. They'll be sharing both the scripture and the story of Jesus' last day on earth uh, through song. Uh, the words and what you'll need uh, for worship, it will be in your bulletin. And I invite you now to stand for our litany of lament. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God, the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From every sin, from every error, from every evil, from the devil's lies and cunning, from eternal death. Deliver us, good Lord. By the mystery of the holy incarnation, by your holy birth, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and suffering, by your death and burial, by your resurrection and ascension, by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the counselor, in all times of trouble, in all times of prosperity, in the hour of death. Help us, good Lord. Life and death stand side by side as we are gathered tonight on this Good Friday. In John's Passion account, Jesus reveals the power and glory of God, even as he is put on trial and sentenced to death. Standing with his disciples at the foot of the cross, we pray for the whole world in the ancient bidding prayer as Christ's death offers life to all. We gather in solemn devotion, but always with the promise that the tree around which we assemble is indeed a tree of life. Congregation, please be seated. Please pray with me. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, for the whole church around the world. Let Amen. us pray. Let us pray for Elizabeth and William, our bishops, for Elizabeth and Daniel, our pastors, for all the leaders, volunteers, and servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Almighty and eternal God, your spirit guides the church and makes it holy. Strengthen and uphold our bishops, pastors, other ministers, and lay leaders. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church, and help each of us in our various vocations to do faithfully the work to which you have called us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, you continue to bless the church, increase the faith and understanding of those preparing for baptism, give them new birth as your children, and keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. We pray, too, for the saints, our brothers and sisters in Christ, who will confirm their faith this weekend. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our sisters and our brothers who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, you give your church unity. Look with favor on all who follow Jesus, your Son. Make all the baptized one in the fullness of faith, and keep us united in the fellowship of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Almighty and eternal God, long ago you gave your promise to Abraham and your teaching to Moses. Hear our prayers that the people you called and elected as your own 
may receive the fulfillment of the covenant's promises. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Almighty and eternal God, gather into your embrace all those who call out to you under different names. Bring an end to interreligious strife and make us more faithful witnesses of the love made known to us in your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Almighty and eternal God, you created humanity so that all may long to know you and find peace in you. Grant that all may recognize the signs of your love and grace in the world and in the lives of Christians and gladly acknowledge you as the one true God. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for God's creation. Almighty and eternal God, you are the creator of a magnificent universe. Hold all the worlds in your arms of your care and bring all things to fulfillment in you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Almighty and eternal God, you are the champion of the poor and oppressed. In your goodness, give wisdom to those in authority so that all people may enjoy peace, justice, and freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty and eternal God, you give strength to the weary and new courage to those who have lost heart. Heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, free those unjustly deprived of liberty, and deliver your world from falsehood, hunger, and disease. Hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Finally, let us pray for all those things for which our Lord would have us ask. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will now worship God with our offering.
cross of Christ is an eternal reminder of God's unconditional love. This day we stand in the shadow of the cross and we gratefully remember.
It was the first day of unleavened bread, and the disciples came to Jesus, asking, Where do you want us to make the preparations for the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says my appointed time is near. I am going to observe the Passover with my disciples at your house. The disciples did as Jesus had instructed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table surrounded by his disciples. He said to them, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He then took a cup, and after giving thanks, said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He then took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper he did the same with the cup, saying, This cup poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Remember me. While still at the table with his disciples, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. In despair, they began to say to him one after the other, Surely it is not I, Lord. Jesus answered, The one who dips his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Woe to that one who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for that one if he had not been born. Judas, the one who would betray him, said, 
Surely not I, Rabbi. Jesus replied, Yes, it is you. Later that evening, Jesus told his followers, This very night, you will all become deserters. But Peter declared, Even if all the others fall away, I will never desert you. Truly I tell you, Jesus said to Peter, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Jesus and his disciples went to a place called Gethsemane, where he said to them, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him and began to be deeply troubled. I am overwhelmed with sorrow, even to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. Going a little farther, Jesus fell to the ground and prayed, Abba, Father, all things are possible from, for you. Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done.
Jesus returned from his place of prayer to find his disciples sleeping. Get up, he said to them, for my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came here to do. Immediately they stepped forward and seized Jesus. He said to the crowd, Have you come with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the courts of the temple teaching, and yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. crowd took Jesus to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. A servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, said, This man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him. A while later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. But Peter replied, Man, I am not. About an hour later, still another asserted, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But he said, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then he remembered the words of Jesus. Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. Peter went out and wept bitterly.
next morning, the council of elders, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together as Jesus was brought before them. They said to him, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe. Then they asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are correct in saying I am. What further testimony do we need? They said, We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. They then brought Jesus before Pilate. But Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they were insistent. Pilate, after learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, sent him to Herod. But finding nothing for which to convict him, Herod sent him back to Pilate. Finally, Pilate said to Jesus' accusers, I have examined this man in your presence and have not found him guilty of any of your charges. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. Then they all shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas! Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The shouts of the crowd eventually prevailed. Pilate finally granted their demand. He released the one who had been imprisoned for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they had desired. When they arrived at the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals kept deriding Jesus, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, 
Do you not fear God? We have been condemned justly and are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness swept over the whole land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last.
centurion, after witnessing what had happened, praised God and said, Certainly, this man was innocent. When the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they were deeply saddened as they returned to their homes. All those who knew Jesus, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance and watched these things. very form of God did not consider equality with God something to be exploited emptied himself taking the very nature of a servant being born in human likeness being in human form he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross let us fix our eyes on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith who for the joy set before him endured the cross and disregarded its shame. <laughs> 